Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we are going to retest the recovery of the Orion carrier plane in the duo format. If you recall in a previous video I had attempted that and we were falling short. I will first implement uh, one suggestion which was to use the remaining fuel in the carrier plane to continue boosting in order to increase the range before we hit the atmosphere. We'll try that out first. We are carrying the jet engines. This is in fact the exact configuration I did in the To Mars and Beyond series with the hydrogen stage that we launched to Mars. So we're still launching it, except this time we're gonna follow one of the Orion carrier planes down. So I'm gonna try to mimic the launch as closely as possible and we will see what happens. Okay, here we go, launching from Brownsville. SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition and launch. So, all right, we will see what happens. It's a heavy load. And maybe it would be better if we just lighten things up a little bit for it instead of having such a heavy load. I think the 90 degree roll is correct. There we go. Obviously, if we didn't have so much in the center stack, the Ryan carrier planes will get further along, but we'll see. So this is exactly as we had it in the To Mars and Beyond video, the most recent one, episode 16, I think. I should probably retest the single Orion carrier plane again, too, uh, because of the custom wings. I wasn't entirely satisfied with how the previous tests with the single Orion carrier plane turned out. Now the jet engine should solve that problem completely. It was just sort of a little bit too far out, I think. But yeah, a retest might be in order for the custom wings. The reason I made the custom wings, uh, except for aesthetics, was that with the procedural wings, whenever I would try to place them in symmetry, and I showed this in the solar system tourism series, uh, they would all get messed up and I would have to readjust them completely and so that was not very good. So I decided to make the custom wings, but the custom wings have subtly different aerodynamics, so... I put the far module on them with the correct measurements and everything, but somehow they're a little bit different, so... Oh, another reason I made the custom wings is because I could put the tail logo on. So, in the To Mars and Beyond series, I would shut down the... I would start up the core 10 seconds with 10 seconds left and then shut down with 5 seconds left and we'll see how that goes. I don't know if there's enough fuel to boost us a significant way, but we'll see. Okay, ignition. And shut down and separation. Okay, we will follow this one, looks like. Let's see, it should be active. Pitch 30, roll 0. First we'll orient and then we'll figure out the rest. Control from here, ah. And we've shut down all the engines. I'm gonna throw all down and then... Um, those four should be fine. I, but I think they're the bottom four. That might not be ideal, but I think it'll be all right. I really would like the center three. Well, I'll just manually activate them. And we have to be very, very careful not to use so much that we exhaust the oxygen, because otherwise we won't have RCS propellant. I wanted to finish rolling before we light the engines, because otherwise the engines will try and roll for us, and that wouldn't be any good, but... Because then we would keep rolling and rolling and rolling, and... That might be unstable, but uh, maybe we'll just kill rotation first, once I get the fuel settled. I'm trying to get the fuel settled, it's not so easy. We don't have a huge amount of thrusters uh, to settle the fuel down here. Okay, let me just kill rotation, and then light a little bit. I said, oh, okay, okay, we're imbalanced. Okay, well, that wasn't very good, was it? So, maybe those three aren't the best engines. Um, maybe the bottom ones are better.
Well, this test is a bit messed up. But we'll get some extra range out of it. Okay, okay, no more, no more. That's fine. Okay, so bottom ones are good for that. <laughs> Middle ones turns out not so good. Uh, I don't think MacJib is doing nearly enough. Ah, stopping time is only two. So we again have a little bit of surplus methane for the jet engines. When we shut down from the stack, from the duo stack, we had five seconds left. And then when we started with the three engines here, we had 15. And that's because we were only using three engines, of course. And then I throttle down to make sure that we weren't using them. This is the full thrust stage time. We wouldn't use them too quickly. I am surprised that the bottom ones were the correct ones to use in this case. I mean, I guess it's heavier on the bottom. I mean, it's got the tiles. I'm sure I did that all properly. But we've got the jet engines fitted, which I didn't initially expect. And the wing is there. So the wing has its own mass, of course, that's not built into the body. The body's center mass is probably lower than halfway. There's the wing and then there's the jet engines. So yeah, I'm surprised that the bottom ones were the most balanced ones, but well, that is what happened. Well, here we go. A whole lot can go wrong as we slam into the atmosphere the first time. We're going nowhere near as fast as the Orion Carry plane normally does solo. And that's a important point. Somebody know that, oh, well, we've got these tiles facing a cryogenic tank on the duo, right? Unlike with the solo Orion carrier plane, so it's sort of like the shuttle's tiles facing the insulated tank, uh, the external tank. However, it's sort of important that we're coming in with this at like maybe 40% orbital velocity. So we are currently here, nowhere near the Florida coast right now. But again, we have the jet engines, we'll see where they take us. Pitching too high or too low basically results in the thing ripping apart. Too high especially. Because then if it's pitching too high, it sort of gets the drag too aggressively and that puts too much stress on everything. If it pitches too low, it doesn't slow down soon enough because it's getting less drag. And then the heat or the aerodynamic stress, because it's still going very fast in thicker atmosphere, causes it to break apart. So it's sort of like, that's not great. The engines can only keep us at like Mach 0.8 anyway. But we could run them a little bit ahead of time. As long as we are in a safe Mach number to do so. Up, 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 up. Let's not make them too hot. That's an interesting sound. Maybe a little bit of pitch up. They're not doing too bad, uh, arresting our... Oh, actually, you know. Oh, but we're heading down now. I think at this point I'll switch to atmospheric autopilot instead so that we're not devoted to that uh, prograde marker. Smart ASS was basically using the prograde marker as a, a way to go. Alright, there we go. So we are here. It's a long way to Cape Canaveral. Trying to find a nice cruising thrust this time. Trying to use about 15 units per second there. That's less than 20 minutes of time though. I don't know. I mean, here it says stage time full throttle, 21 minutes, so... It doesn't seem right to me, but... We are basically level Mach 0.84. Maybe I should turn the RCS off. That could help a bit. Okay, well, using that extra fuel to give us a boost 
has basically led us to fall short. Of course the jet engines are more efficient than using the rockets to boost us forward. I say of course, but uh, you know, well, now that we have tested it, we know for sure. It's possible that I could glide into Tampa the way I did in the previous test of this and end up basically in the same place, but this isn't sufficient. So I'm not going to waste too much more time on this. We're not getting to Cape Canaveral like this. So I'm going to try to reserve more fuel and maybe uh, cut out some of the o oxygen because that's about four tons of oxygen right there. So I'm going to trade more oxygen for more methane. And we'll try and this time we'll use the correct engines to do the boost forward. We'll still try a boost forward. Uh, but we'll also cut off with the duo uh, from the duo a little bit earlier and so reserve more fuel like that. But right now it can it's important that it can fly stably at Mach 0.84 at this height. This is a very important thing because ultimately it's going to need to be able to fly back from Cape Canaveral to the launch site, right? On its own, it is basically its own little cargo plane. And it needs to be able to do that. That's part of its functionality. And it can carry other things on the top of it, in fact. If, uh, for instance, we are launching some, like the Orion space plane, the Orion 3 space plane, which is its normal sort of second stage slash cargo, uh, it could potentially bring that back over to the launch site if that happens to be la uh, landing at Cape Canaveral. So, though, ideally it would just land at the launch site. Um, so yeah, this is not a trivial thing to want it to be able to fit jet engines and cruise properly. But we need to make sure that we can get it back first. This is a secondary thing, so let us see what we can do to optimize it. Okay, so I have traded off some of the oxygen for some more methane, basically. Uh, 4,000 units of liquid oxygen, which isn't much in the grand scheme of things, but it is what we seem to have extra last time. And I've added 6,000 units of methane, and we will uh, cut out early this time, not 5 seconds, but 8 seconds. And we'll see whether that works out. Of course, that means that the core has to do more, and we have less payload capacity, but we'll figure that out. I mean, if we have less payload capacity, we have less payload capacity, right? What can we do? So, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. Okay, core ignition, given that we are three seconds earlier this time. And shut down, and separation. Okay, and control from here. And... Start maneuvering. So we've got a thousand meters per second, but normally with the Orion carrier plane we'd be going at maybe 4,000 meters per second orbital speed. So we're still basically 600 short is what we're looking at here. But we're looking for the jet engines to make that up. Now, is it, uh, I feel like our apoapsis is lower though, which is weird. But no, well, it would be because we decoupled earlier. So yeah, I guess that's how that is. We're at, we aren't actually getting into space as far as RSS is concerned this time. Last time I think we were at 150 kilometers. So yeah, downside of reserving more fuel is that they aren't going quite so vigorously as before, but here we go, igniting. We'll start to pitch up a little bit here too, since we're losing ground. And try to use as much as possible. Okay, 18 meters per second for RCS. 500 units of liquid oxygen. Really sort of bare minimum kinds of things. Right now our trajectory looks like that. Well, the blue line. So our boost forward, you can see the other Orion carrier plane, our boost forward actually covered all of this. So that's not too bad. But it's certainly not enough. Uh, that's the actual 
upper stage which did some burning before it went out of render range. Okay, here we go again. The serious G-force part. For this one not getting into the red zone. And we can see the result right now. Okay, getting ready to activate the jet engines. We are currently here. Doesn't seem too bad. Right now we are using some of the RCS. We are trying to match, uh, max out our pitch here. But I think we can go ahead with the jets now. We can't pitch up any higher right now. And we'll ultimately run out of the RCS ability to help us keep pitch. Our wing placement is admittedly not great for controlling pitch. We don't have full pitch control with a horizontal stabilizer or a canard, and the center of mass is, well, the center of mass is sort of here-ish. So there's enough of a lever arm for those control surfaces to work, but it's not much. Incidentally, you'll note that basically they probably would never deflect downward until maybe on landing, so they do sort of clear the jet engine thrust. Well, anyway, we are going to have to pitch down a bit, otherwise stall, probably. Once we lose the RCS. It's much more efficient to run the jets up here at this altitude, though. But we just won't be able to maintain the altitude. Okay, switching to atmospheric autopilot. Ooh, that caused a bit of a dip. And throttling down a bit. Maybe since we're also lighter without the oxygen, the spare oxygen, we can do a little bit better here. Higher altitude cruise. I mean, I guess somehow the last resort will be to add boosters. <laughs> That's always the last resort. Well, for some people, it's the first resort in Kerbal Space Program. For, for me, it'd be the last resort here. Ah, uh, yeah, we can't cruise up here. We have to go down a bit. Well, we'll get further, but I'm not sure we're going to get further enough here. Okay, we are approaching the coast. So, we're not going to land in the Tampa Bay area this time. We should probably turn a little bit further north. I don't know if we're going to get to Cape Canaveral, though. Uh, okay, okay, let me get out of Fizz Warp. <laughs> That's dodgy. I think I can see the coast over there. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> it still seems like a pretty long ways. Maybe. Being able to see your landing site is always a good sign. Well, I can definitely see Cape Canaveral now. I'm gonna come in from the south. And I guess I'll just, uh the idle things. I don't know if I have enough fuel to do it like this. As we descend, we'll be consuming more fuel. But, you know, I can see the landing site, so... Should probably give it a go. In a way, it's preferable to be under jet engine power when over land anyway. Especially populated areas. So... That might be a plus for safety's sake, or at least perception of safety. Not that the space shuttle didn't come in over land completely unpowered, but... It'd be easier just to use the stock runway. 
but that's not as long. Okay, super idling here. We do have air brakes. I don't know if they'll work or not, but we have air brakes. I've kept an excess of energy just in case. As I pretty much always do. Let me see. Brakes. Okay, to do things. Hey, locked view. Uh, we're really fast to be dropping the landing gear, but I'm dropping the landing gear. And I want to verify that the brakes still do things. Okay. No, well, that is good. Oh, wait, they're not going out. They're stuck. Why do they do that? They are now stuck for reasons I don't understand. Yeah, I can't extend or retract them. Uh, I don't know what's going on with them. Right, well, we'll be coming in fast then. Let me try to carefully bleed off some of this. Oh, oh, oh no, it's not careful. Oh no, uh. Uh oh. Oh, I can't get back to the prograde vector. I can't go back to the prograde vector. Oh, uh, we stalled out. Uh, we were imbalanced right at the end there. Uh, so right there, our center of mass went behind the center of lift. We were just, uh, we were close to empty. Okay, well, this is taking it a while. So close. So close to success. I think we could have made it. Uh, we just need to have the center of mass a little bit further forward. Okay. But I think we have numbers that... Wow, it's taking a while. Okay, yes, thank you, thank you. Right. I don't even know where we are. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have numbers that we can work with. We, in theory, with the current load and shutting down where we did and everything we can get back in theory it's just I need to tweak the center of mass a little bit which is sort of up to me really because the 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 amount that we have to shift is like maybe 0.1 meters so uh, that's just a matter of the placement of like avionics or something so yeah all right well there we have it well somewhere down here there is still actually the body of it and some engines or something we have the electric charge and nitrogen somehow, but it's in the void in an alternate reality, apparently. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. It's like that. <laughs> it's mostly intact. It probably shouldn't be. We lost the control surface right there. Okay. All right, then. Anyway, that's enough testing for one go. I think we have something to work with here. And it'll cut into our payload capacity, and we'll have to see how much that is. But I'll deal with that in a subsequent occasion. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.